Hello, Zero K fan. This is Shadow Fury Three with another exhibition match stream. Starting out with replay of Lauri versus Rymark on Flooded Valley, which would be fairly interesting. Rymark, of course, is the player who has been doing a lot of the work on C balance in Zero K for the last few months. Lauri, on the other hand, is just a really good player. So we'll see how that works out. Start now. It's Rymark over on the south side of the map, going for Amphibious spot. While Lowry in the north going for Hovercraft, neither player going for sea. This map that's a little bit unusual, normally we see at least one player go for shipyards, but apparently not now. Rymark very quickly getting up, one duck, and then moving on straight to conches. While Lowry in their hand getting several daggers, they're planning on getting about five daggers, getting a quill in between. Actually, six daggers with a quill right in between. First two already moving out, while Rymark in the other hand having their duck move forward. At this point, Lowry is kind of, they're kind of even. I think Rymark will be able to take out one of the daggers. The thing with daggers is that they do fire underwater, and ducks do actually end up losing to daggers if there are four of them. But fewer than four, ducks actually have a chance. That's below water. Above water, ducks completely wreck daggers. But below water, it's a bit more even. Anyway, right now, Lowry just getting the, just getting the daggers in, able to deal a bit of damage to one of the metal extractors, not able to actually kill it, though. Looks like Lowry's trying to just find a way around, trying to find some weak point that they can use to attack, but nope. Not even going to go for that. Going to retreat, going to regroup, getting a few more daggers up. That first quill is up, and the duck going after it. Well, it'll be a few shots before it actually kills it. Ducks underwater, as mentioned before, are not the most... Well, they're not it's the accuracy. The actual weapon damage is about the same, but they're less accurate underwater. However, this quill is dead. Down it goes, and the dagger is trying to get rid of the duck. They should be able to do so successfully. Though, one more shot the duck gets, and that's all it gets. Now with four daggers, any further ducks can have a much harder time actually doing any damage. And instead, Rymark going for archers. This is really unusual. I mean, scout, scout makes sense. The duck, a little bit risky. But archers don't do anything below water. Like, they need to surface to fire, and they get a little bit weird when they do so. Because they're impulse-based, they don't actually operate in a very obvious way. Like, what'll happen is they'll fire, and then they'll shoot themselves back, because they have no land to press against. It's rather amusing, but difficult to aim reliably. At the same time, Lowry just building up more and more daggers, getting another quill, but building, continuing to build daggers. Making it harder and harder for Rymark to assault with units they have. The scallop is gonna be able to work decently well, but at this point, the archer and the duck, they want to get on top of land. And they don't want to be fighting underwater, they want to fight on land. Right now, Lowry has the advantage on the water. Especially since, like I said, the archer cannot really do much. Unless something has changed, I don't know about, but... Well, I don't know about it in that case. And the archer jumping out of the water and, like I said, does rather amusingly fly on its own thanks to the water cannons. However, even with that, the conch cannot survive. The archer jumping once again, managing to deal actually a fair amount of damage. Getting Wow, nice shot there! Bit lucky there, smacked one dagger into another, killing both of them. So actually, the archers are working better than I expected. I... Interesting to note, so I didn't realize that they did actually do that, but yeah. Gray, float to fire. Okay. So that much I hadn't seen before, but that is good. That is good to see. Archers, I didn't know how reliably they jump out of the water, and now we do. Very reliably, and it's rather amusing to watch, as expected. At this point, Lowry, a little surprising they are sticking to daggers. I mean, they still have quite a few, but I'm... Okay, there's the mace thinking, why are they not getting a mace? Why are they not switching over to something that will be a bit better at dealing with larger numbers of units? Especially being that archers are kind of skirmishy units, skirmishy riot units. Whereas maces are, well, pure riots. Actually, you know what? Come to think of it. Okay, they're the classed as raider riot bots, so I guess it does work out that way. Maces are fairly heavy, so pushing them around is not as easy as it is with daggers. And over the southwest, Rymark stopping one of the daggers coming along the, the southwest side. Uh, Lowry, on the other hand, just getting some defense, getting their territory set up. They kind of have the north and the center. Rymark taking most of the south side completely, though Lowry does have the center, does have the next large... Actually, I think this is the largest chunk of land, other than the stuff on top of these cliffs over here. So Lowry actually taking a pretty important part of the map. And also getting their daggers around... But at this point, Rymark actually has a pretty easy time getting up here. The ducks can go up. They will die. This Don't get me wrong. The lotuses will kill them. But amphibious bots have an easier time getting up and down of land. Especially land this land. This is very sloped land. Is land right here. 
it's really, really sloped. But that is just, that's just the way that map is laid out. However, hovercrafts can get up it, it's just a little bit harder to do. They're not as flexible in doing so. And, okay, so Louder right now getting their daggers over to the center. Rymark also getting, well, a scallop over to the center, which won't last especially long. We'll get ready, it'll get rid of one of the lotuses, and that's all it can really do at this point. No additional support. Rymark right now, Rymark and Lowry are fairly even, actually, though. Rymark a bit behind in energy production compared to Lowry. Lowry having taken the center and put on a bunch of wind generators. Lowry's energy production is a little bit better. Yeah, at this point, the ducks... If the duck can get above water, it'll work okay, but... Hard to really point... No, I say that's an archer, my mistake. Arch is gonna have an even harder time. Duck would have worked out a bit better, I think. And Rymark... Okay, so Rymark right now going for a combination of duck, archer, boy, and a few scallops... Or, well, that one scallop, which is now dead. Is now a wreck. The boy, on the other hand, will have a much easier time getting in and actually dealing the damage it needs to. Though the archer is rather distracted at the moment. But even if the boy can get on land, that'll help out a lot. That urchin can only attack underwater. Although, to be fair, amphibious bots do heal up very quickly underwater, so I can kind of see why that's being done the way it is. But even then, that's really hard to pull off properly. And up come more defenses. I mean, really, going along the back would be... Or the west side or the north side. That would be the best plan right now. And Claymore rocket jumping itself over to the other side of this hill. I'm not sure why I did that. Probably just a mistake. Meant to fire underground. Claymore's death charges are, once again, impulse weapons, as are many things in the sea. And they cause them to fly. They cause a lot of things to fly. Whatever gets hit by it usually flies around a lot. So at this point, Rymark taking the northeast side of the map, taking the southwest as well. Lowry taking the northwest. Like, the northeast is something Rymark is setting out to attack. Though Lowry is aware of this. At least partially. While also setting up some forces here, it looks like... Oh, inconvenient rock in the way. Nicely done there. By Rymar, just sticking their forces behind that rock. Having it block off everything. And these ducks, once again, regrouping with the forces to the northeast. And the forces to the northeast are about to attack. The daggers are in the way, but they don't do well against archers. As noticed, as mentioned before, archers do really well at dealing with them. However, they're also going to have to deal with the mace, which is going to be a little bit of a harder task. But at least the daggers are really no issue whatsoever, and the ducks are moving in after... Those ducks are going to have a very open position to move from. But the archers are going to have a slightly harder time actually getting in and dealing the damage they need to. Just because they can't stay in range that long. And in comes the claymore to try to deal with those archers, and... Down goes, not hitting itself this time. Which is good for it, because it doesn't want to be flying away from everywhere. But even then, the claymore is really the only thing that exists to deal with this. Oh, never good. It goes away. It, it got a little bit careless. Smashing into the wall. Well, okay, smashes into the cliff. That is not what was meant to happen with the Claymore. But you gotta be careful with those, because they do have a huge amount of impulse on their weapons, and that sort of thing does happen. And at this point, Rymark not able to deal as much damage as they would have liked. The Mace getting rid of the ducks far too easily. Like, the Mace is the thing... If underwater, the Mace is fine. If the Amphibs are in the water, the Mace is fine, but the Daggers are a threat. If they're above water, then the Mace is a threat, and the Daggers completely get torn to shreds. But the Daggers were already dead at that point, so it didn't really matter. That wasn't that important at the time. Anyway. We are... Uh, so, see now that Rymark getting slightly behind economically. That attack was actually a big deal, especially being that that's a lot of metal. How much metal is that? That is... That is 340 metal given straight to Lowry. I'm sure Lowry will appreciate that. Lowry as well also being able to take the metal over here, the 500 so metal in this area to the south of the center here. Uh, just slightly north of Rymark's base. Rymark is getting into increasingly worse positions right now. At this point, let's see, 17 metal income. It's a matter of being careful where they attack. I mean, the ducks can do pretty well, especially when it comes to dealing with a lot of these expansions. Just running around raiding. There's a lot of naked expansions on the map. Ducks running around to deal with those. That will work fairly well. Claymore here, trying to deal with the center. That's actually, I think, the same Claymore that got itself shot across the other side. But it doesn't matter, because that is now dead. It is no more. It is a wreck. At the same time, the Ducks form turning this west side expansion into more wrecks. Continuing to move north, but at this point, Lowry has so much reclaim that it doesn't matter so much at this stage. Lowry has a lot of reclaim to work with. Rymark just has their metals 
their metal extractors, and they're raiding out decently well. But that's about all they really have. Need to get rid of this urchin once that's gone, it'll be a bit easier to attack here. And at this point, Rymark is slowly but surely surrounding the center. And that's where Lowry has really been setting themselves up, is on the center area. The lot of defenses from the direct path, but Rymark, if they attack from the north or from the west, and they are setting units to the west and to the north, they're going to have a much easier time actually dealing with that. And because of that, it should be, once again, Claymore getting knocked away by its own shot. I have to be really careful about that. That's the thing with Claymores. They're a bit tricky to use if you, if you attack while pulling them forward, they will tend to blow themselves away. The impulse will just, as, you, as we've seen several times, cause them to fly away, sometimes into cliffs, sometimes just onto the other side of an area, but yeah, they fly away pretty hard. Surprisingly, these ducks aren't doing much. I'm, I don't know why Rymark isn't putting them forward. Does Rymark have... Rymark doesn't actually have any radar coverage, by the way. But still, I'm surprised that they aren't moving forward to try to raid out further, because that Rymark was on a really good path there, but still, it's just... There's a lot going there. However, Lowry is getting not as surrounded as I thought they'd be. Rymark attacking from the bottom. They're attacking from the south. They're not attacking from the north. They're not attacking from the west. And... Yeah, that's... Actually, yeah, that wouldn't be a bad idea, actually. But that's a little bit hard to do interface-wise. Setting no-go zones for pathing. Interesting thought. At this point, though, it's just a matter of move along in a certain direction. Like, as in, you know, you just select them and drag a line. Or several lines. Anyway, at this point, though, there is a nice flank going on. Rymar coming in from the eastern side and the western side. Eastern side with archers and boys. Western side with ducks. Lowry not really piercing the center much. The next map is... Sorry, people are complaining about being a water map. So yeah, the next map is not going to be a water map. The next map, I think, is... Oh, Intersection. So yeah, the next map is definitely not a water map. No water whatsoever. I personally kind of like water maps. You get funny things with the Claymores, but... I guess not everyone does. Anyway. Ducks coming in here. So the left side of the flank doing a pretty good job. The right side of the flank not able to advance as well as it would like. Not really able to do much, honestly. And what the heck was that? I think that was just the Claymore mine. And nice shot with the Claymore getting rid of all of the ducks in one go. Just barely too, just on land, but that does work. And at this point with Lowry going for the air switch, that becomes even harder for Rymark to do anything at this point. In Rymark. They have a slight economic advantage, they're expanding along the sides, but they haven't taken out the center at all. If Lowry lost their commander, that would actually be a big deal, but that's not going to happen anytime soon. So if Lowry lost their metal extractors, their main base, that, that would be a bigger deal, but I don't know how well that's going to happen. Like, that's really unlikely to happen anytime soon. Or at all, really. I mean, more boys coming in, but Rymark throwing a lot of their forces away, not attacking from the north. I don't know, why is that... Ah, darn, I want to see the factory. I think the factory might have had a rally point over to the center. But anyway, that is game. A little bit anticlimactic there. Lowry taking it. Rather, you know, taking the center. That was a big deal. I think large part of that was that Rymark was trying to attack it more directly than they should have. And also, that duck over on the west side could have moved north far sooner. That would have dealt a lot more damage. Anyway, next game is going to be Intersection. It's going to be Orphelius and the Sponge on Intersection. So stay tuned for that, it'll be up in just a moment.